Okay, let's go ahead and continue our conversation on our chi-squared tests that we can do. So for this video, we're going to focus on the chi-squared goodness of fit. Okay, so we use the goodness of fit uh, when we've got a piece of like categorical data and we're trying to see if it fits a distribution that we already uh, that we already know so for example let's say that we are rolling a dice and this dice has got six colors one for each side so we'll look at our dice we'll say purple purple we'll have red we'll have blue we'll have yellow We'll have green, and we'll have white. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, and we'll have white. All right, so these are our six categories that we have. Now let's say we've got these colors on a six-sided dice. Okay, so if we have a fair six-sided dice, this would be uh, we could say that our expected probabilities All right, and those expected probabilities would be uniform if this is a fair dice. This would be 1 divided by 6, 1 divided by 6, 1 divided by 6, okay, etc, etc, etc. Alright, so this would be like for a uniform distribution if we had a fair dice. So let's say that we had a sample size of n equals 30, and then the expected frequency would be then 5 in each of those categories for the expected frequency or how many of these outcomes we would, would we expect to see. Now if we actually roll the fair dice, would we see exactly five in each of those if we rolled at 30? No, but uh, I mean it's possible, but it's also possible that we could get like a six here and a four there and some other little variations. But overall, you know, if we were to repeat this over and over and over again, on average we would expect to see it be five on each of those. Okay, so when Let's suppose that we have a dice uh, that you know we're playing some game with where we've got these different colors and we think that it's actually loaded. We think that this dice is actually producing maybe purple or red or something more often than it really should be if it was a fair dice. Okay, so what we can basically do is we could set up a null and alternative hypothesis because we can still do just a, a hypothesis test like we've been doing for like months now. So we could set up like our null hypothesis and what we set it up is like okay we expect that these probabilities to follow some given distribution. In this case it's a uniform distribution but it could be like a weird distribution too like maybe we think maybe we're a, we manufacture loaded dice and so we're trying to get these probabilities to be one-third, one-third, one-third and then zeros for these other outcomes so that it never comes up blue, yellow, or green. Um, and then we could we could do our test to see if it followed that specific distribution. But for this one, since it is uniform, let's go ahead and put that up. So for our null hypothesis is that dice outcomes are uniform. And then our alternative is that they are not uniform. Now we, we want to, to talk about this and we should probably talk about like the instead of dice outcomes maybe the dice distribution and we should like say dice maybe true distribution so we make sure that we're talking about the population parameter. Okay so dice true distribution and that should be is is uniform and then we said it is not uniform okay so let's suppose we go out and we actually roll this dice so then we would have our observed frequencies observed frequencies and let's say that we got nine one eight two and 
seven, three. So this is still of our sample size of n equals 30. All right, if we want to do a goodness of fit, there's a couple of checks that we need to do. Probably first and foremost, we need to make sure that each of these outcomes are independent so that each dice roll, one isn't like changing the effect of the next dice roll. And then the other thing that we want to make sure is that the number of expected values or the, the expected frequency that we get needs to be a, a five for each of these outcomes. So that's why I chose 30. 30 was the minimum sample size for this uniform distribution with six different options to get five outcomes or, or five frequency for every single one of these outcomes. Right, now, observe in my observed frequency how not all of these are equal to 5. That's fine as long as the expected frequency is 5 across the board. Okay, so we've got this new, uh, this new observed frequency, and we want to know, is that significantly different from our expected frequency for us to reject the null hypothesis that, this, that the distribution of this dice is in fact uniform and instead claim that it is not uniform or that it is a, in fact a loaded dice. And so like this is, this is the concept of, of the goodness of fit um, analysis that we use with our chi-squared distribution. And uh, I'm going to then take this and I'll show you how we can take this information, plug it into our commander and to our software package so that we can actually make the determination because remember we still, since we did this null hypothesis, we still are doing like, you know, alpha 0 0.05 or something. We compare our results to our alpha and then we make our conclusion. And when we make our conclusions here for our chi-squared stuff, we're not going to be doing any post hocs. So that means that we're not going to be trying to be doing a confidence interval. Uh, we're not going to be trying to like, like actually make some sort of estimation of what the true distribution is. We're just going to satisfy ourselves with the conclusion. Like if we reject the null hypothesis, then we're going to conclude the alternative. And then we also want to make a graph of what this actually looked like from the sample that, that we took. And so we'll go over that in our software videos.